All right, welcome back everyone. I am Rajneesh Gupta and we are on the CompTIA Security Plus exam preparation series. All right, so before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you keep receiving, keep getting the cybersecurity content. All right, so let's begin. We are going to learn about the risk management framework here. Okay, and the first framework is about Center for Internet Security. Now, this is very, very important framework or the organization, I would say. And if they 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 don't just provide a framework, they also work on the benchmark, uh, security ben benchmarking, uh, you know, security uh, hardening practices, control uh, practices as well, right? So, if I wanted to show you that. Give me one second, let me, perfect. So if you visit their website and you know, in the website itself, uh, you can try going to the CIS benchmark in the home page itself. Give me one second, yeah. So in the home page itself, in the CIS benchmark, you'll find the benchmark standards for different environment for you know, for AWS, for Apache, SCTP servers, you can download the CIS benchmark. You can download for CentOS Linux. Uh, you can download the benchmark for Checkpoint Firewall for Cisco devices as well. This benchmark basically carries the content related to what are the best practices you should apply in order to bring down the overall risk. And that's all about the risk management framework. All right. so. Uh, Let's come back to our slides here. And um, the second kind of uh, framework is the NIST framework. NIST is basically, uh, you know, a pretty wi widely used framework. And this is also help, not just a risk management framework, they also have the cybersecurity framework as well. Okay, and this carries multiple phases. If you look at the cybersecurity framework, they have a different method for this. Now in the international section, in the international vertical, we have ISO 27001, which is, uh, you know, uh, in addition to the 27001, we even have 27002 as well, and even 27701. So this carries, this consists of the controls uh, in terms of what controls you require, and even the risk management uh, framework as well right so I hope you understand the risk management framework is all about a uh, way of identifying the risk okay this is the way we identify the risk and manage it when I say manage you might want to remediate the risk you might want to ignore the risk or you might want to digest the risk as per your appetite right when you want to uh, digest the risk it's all depends you know uh, if the organization feel like the risk or the threat on a specific asset is not that huge i mean let's let's take an example of maybe uh maybe a brute force attack okay uh if you take an example of brute force attack and this is an attack this is a threat but for this kind of a threat um we try to understand if you know how many times the brute force attack was successful in past five years it wasn't really so in that case if you know uh, if these if the control is or maybe the possible consequences or business business impact could be very less in that case for one of the system or one of the assets so you might want to ignore the risk you know uh, for a specific asset if there have been there have been uh, some some uh, brute force attempt happen you might want to ignore the risk because uh, you know it, it's not just because of the uh, kind of investment we need to do it's even about certain other challenges as well where we have some other dependencies anyways let's go go back uh, let's let's move to the second compliance which is the uh, SOC 2 compliance this is more about the internal audits this is important for you know this is what we call as the SS SSAE, which is the standards statement on the uh, uh, standards for attestation engagement system and organization control. So this carries the SOC 1 and SOC 2 compliances and this is majorly for the financial statement integrity, right? So this is this plays a very, very important role. 
and the next we have this special publication of uh, 830 uh, which is I think the revision number one in order to get a better idea we can go to the actual white paper here and you can see let me erase okay you can see this is the white paper for a special publication in the next special publication 830 revision one and in this white paper you clearly get the idea about what how how to assess the risk what are the different process a uh, risk management process the fundamentals of it and the different stages involved so you have to prepare the assessment and next conduct the assessment where you identify the threat sources and events identify the vulnerabilities uh, determine the likelihood of the occurrence determine the magnitude of the impact and determine the risk if you recall our earlier video we have done exactly the same way we have tried getting the information one second in our earlier video if you go back even you we we started with getting the threat information then we look at the our asset then um, you know we also try to find out the vulnerability on our asset then we moved to moved in and calculated the uh, likelihood likelihood of the attack and then impact if let's say the ddos happen uh for you know if if ddos happen uh, what would be the loss on the business for or uh, maybe two hours right so maybe ten thousand for another two hours so that way we calculated the overall risk right so in fact our first video itself we have calculated the risk but we haven't specifically talked about any standards i did it based on my personal experience right okay so this is about the nest let's come back okay now next we have the data privacy and uh, data privacy and uh, regulation and standards the first very important and very popular is the gdpr now gdpr is applicable and it's majorly there to protect the uh, data of eu citizens okay so their private data has to be secure as per the gdpr compliance irrespective of where it is stored is it stored in locally or in the cloud or wherever it is it, they have to follow any organization who want to serve the customers the customers in the eu region they have to follow this compliance okay and this is majorly for the eu citizen remember this next we have the hipaa compliance this is for organization who are providing the health services and this is majorly this is majorly for protecting the american uh, patient medical information the full full form is the health health insurance uh, portability and accountability act okay and um, yeah so for this itself uh, there have been many breaches happened in the past because of this the hipaa compliance uh, have been improved as well okay and there have been organization who specifically been focusing in delivering the hipaa compliance services too next and the very very popular is the pci dss that's applicable globally and in, on the international level uh, which is pci dss which is for payment card industry uh, any this is majorly for protecting the credit card holders or the card holder information so anybody who has who own a credit card or any card uh, they, they this compliance is majorly to protect their credit card information and their personal information so this is the, this is made by the uh, top uh, credit card provider organization like Ma mastercard visa and some other organizations as well and there are set of 12 12 requirement that has to be fulfilled by merchants by service provider or whomever who either store or process the credit card information okay so let's look at some more detail let's okay let's come to the pci dss standards document you can um, you can actually start with their you know this is the entire document if you jump to their ninth page you will find the pci dss security standards there are different goals 
and each goal has got certain requirements. So if you look at the number of requirement, these are 12. So any organization who is, uh, who is able to maintain this 12 requirements by PCI DSS body, then they can get the PCI DSS certificate. That means they can now start accepting and storing the credit card information. Remember this. So first, first goal is to build and maintain maintain a secure network system for this there are two requirements install and maintain firewall configuration to protect the card and cardholder data and vendors remove any kind of a default password or change the password as well uh the very uh, very important one is the regularly regularly monitor and test the network that's where you have to perform vulnerability scanning and all the other uh, activity as well regularly test the security system and processes maintain a vulnerability management program this is where we have to look uh, make sure we have the antivirus installed on our all the system we have to develop and maintain a secure system and application as well so this is where we also need to ensure we have an encryption involved wherever we store those information so per, the second goal is the protect uh, card holder data that's where we have to make sure we encrypt the transmission of the card holder data across open and public network so even for that we need to make sure we are making use of encryption so that's the reason why organization why financial organization are you know uh, are, are actually making use of data loss prevention tool or data encryption softwares as well all right so i think it was clear for you about the risk management framework and data privacy and privacy regulation and standards as well if you have any question, you can ask me in the comment. Thank you.